I'd planned on mo moving the crane the night before the mock trial, but then I got injured. Wanting to keep my part-time job a secret, I had to do it just before the mock trial instead. Ah! And I thought this was the big break we've been waiting for! Now that the defense's sophistry, sophistry is laid bare, I would have the court recall my claim. The body was dropped out of a third floor window to a mat near the maintenance area. Then a ball cart was used to move it to the stage. See? I've been paying attention! <laughs> sure. Sure. You just read that off a flashcard, I bet. <laughs> well done, your baldness. Now consider this. The accused was sighted, dragging that mat. Ergo, it was she who moved the body. Uh Well, I think you were on the right track, Athena. I hope. Y you do? Yeah! Juniper remains the prime suspect if we assume the body was moved per her script. So, as the defense, you have to figure out how else the body could have been moved. But... Oh, is he telling me what to think of another way besides the crane? Miss Sykes, if you have a counter-argument, this court would love to hear it, and if... If you do not, it is time for the verdict. Isn't that correct, your baldness? No! Not yet! It's not over yet! <laughs> All I have to do is show that the body wasn't moved like it was in the script, right? Well, that would show that the mat had nothing to do with this case. There is a sort of great renown that cuts down sophistic lawyers. Its name is Evidence. You don't scare me! Force a smile, Athena! You can do it! What's wrong with your face, Athena? It's a weird mix of terror and cr a creepy grin. <laughs> Just focus on how the body could have been moved without it being dropped. How could anyone lower it without just dropping it? It's not like it could fly. Or maybe it could. After all, there is a way to zip between art room and the stage. Someone could have easily used that thing! Yes, because I would think at that moment in time, that thing, not say the exact word. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yes, of course! Miss Sykes, the court would like to hear what you have to for us for. Oh my god. The court would like to see what you have for us. All I have to do is to show the tiniest shred of a possibility. The mat and ball cart weren't used to move the body. It was you. It was. This is what was used. My badge! <laughs> if, if you don't have the evidence, the best evidence to have is the badge of justice um but no seriously it was the school banner the key here is the thing that ties the art room and the stage together together might i propose an idea 
It might do you well to tie your lips together, unless you forget... Lest you further expose your ignorance. <laughs> this isn't exactly the time for black comedy, Prosecutor Black Quill. Anyway, the court will recall the wire on which the school banner was hung. That wire was strung between the art room and the stage which allowed students to run or reel in the school banner from the art room. The body could have easily lowered to the stage via the wa this wire. Objection. Spare me your am armchair theories. This wasn't some kind of high wire act. The body surely would could have fallen. Yet there are no signs of bless, blunt force trauma. Objection! Oh, you surprised me, Prosecutor Blackwell. You didn't actually think I'd failed to account for that, did you? I'm sure that's exactly what he thought. Shut up, Apollo! <laughs> when we investigated the stage yesterday, the bottom part of the school banner had been tied into a pouch-like shape. And pouches are useful for carrying things. What do you think this one could have carried? Well, go on, please, explain! Cause I don't know! I'm brainless! The body was bundled into the pouch-like section of the banner and sent down the wire. body would have been down on that stage in a flash and there'd be no need for the mat hmm. I've heard the phrase carrying the banner but the banner doing the carrying <laughs> holy crap Objection. Hmm. I have no patience for you and your cheap parlor tricks. Your claim is as, shake, as shaky as a corpse performing that absurd high wire act. If you have an actual objection, then just come out and say it! I trust you recall the bloodstains left on that art room pottery. If the wire had been used to move the body, it would have been have to be via the window above the quad, the one with the winch. However, the blood-stained pottery was next to the window above the maintenance area. Ergo, the wire and banner had not at all to do with the case. Oh, um, <laughs> the the plain bloodstained pottery. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> this doesn't look good. Uh, we'll be back to this mat theory if you don't do something, man. Well, Miss Sykes, I hope you have something better this time than a circus act. If my wire theory is true, then that blood on the pottery must not have been... BLOOD AT ALL! No. Maybe it's not the victim's blood. Did the police check to see from whom the blood on the pottery came from? Shame on you, Sykes Dono. Have a little more respect for the constabulary. Right? <laughs> Minus 10 on your test score for detectiving! 
looks like they didn't check it. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't let it get you down, Prosecutor Blackwill. Everyone makes mistakes. Spare me your cheek. We will not know, not either way, till the tests are run. True, but in the meantime, I'm going to press my claim as far as I can. Your baldness. I demand that the blood on the pottery be analyzed this instant! Of course. It shouldn't take long to get the results back. Oh my! That was quick! <laughs> We're history if it turns out to be the victim's blood. Please. Please let it be someone else's. Please! Please! <sighs> it seems the blood was not from the victim. What?! Furthermore, a comparison from other parties involved with this case reveals that the blood belongs to one Hugh O'Connor. Dum, dum, dum. Score. Well, you um, you got some splaining to do. <laughs> You got some splaining to do. Don't worry, Junie. Just try to relax. Hugh's hands... His hands were... Dripping with blood! Your Honor, as we saw earlier, the witness's left hand had suffered a serious injury. He sustained the wound in a struggle with his victim, and his blood got on the pottery. Then Juni saw his blood-stained hands as they passed each other in the first floor hall. It's the only explanation that covers everything. Objection! There is but one way now to turn aside her blade. But do not cast the blame on me. Your grudge is with Sykes, don't know, for it is she who forces me to expose your secret. <laughs> Fine! W whatever! Wow. How much dirt does he have on Hugh? The court will observe this odd looking envelope. It was inside this that Miriam Scuttlebutt's script was found. Dang! That looks kind of dangerous. Miss Scuttlebutt's? But didn't the prosecution already claim that this envelope is the one that contained her script? Circumstances have changed, you see. Golden Boy had hidden this from all of us. Let's see here. My word! Talk about the world's most painful paper cut! Suffering succotash! <laughs> Indeed, you can clearly see that this is this envelope is not opened correctly. A powerful spring-loaded blade will shoot forth, leaving a horrible, terrible, horrible. Terribly horrible gash upon the can. The only one who had been told of the correct way to open it was Constance Court. You really want to see my script that bad? Well, you better watch out. Read it without my permission, and you wish you hadn't! Dang! Dang, man! Yikes! Miriam wasn't kidding when she said that! The blood on the blade is the witnesses. Our genius here 
tried to sneak a peek at the wrong script. <laughs> and paid for his foolishness! Like a certain Fulbright. Ouch! This guy's got the worst... This guy's the worst genius I've ever seen! Don't worry about it, Athena. Isn't... The wound isn't that deep. We've still got the wire theory. Yeah... I've got it! Since the blood was... Blood by the window overlooking the maintenance area isn't the victim's... There's no longer any basis for denying the body was moved using the wire and banner. Therefore, the defense once again asserts just that. Hold it! <laughs> you call yourself a lawyer? <laughs> Don't you see the glaring contradiction in your thinking? Huh? What? The court would like to remind the witness that his role is not to point out. <laughs> and you, how can you adhere to such outdated beliefs? But whatever! It seems you've forgotten the two statues that were on stage directly below the wire. A body sent sliding down the wire would have crashed into them. Care to explain that? Care to explain that away? Why? I believe he's right. The statues and the wire are extremely close together. Ah, uh, so the body would have collided with the statues? Hmm. What if they did collide? Wait, that's it! I can do that with my computer screen now! <laughs> Speaking of those statues, we still don't know how they were broken. But if we assume the body crashed into them... That would also explain that loud sound we heard while we were in the waiting room. Oh. Now that you mention it, you and Mr. Wright went out to the stage after you heard that sound, correct? Objection! Interesting. How very interesting. But may I ask one question? When was it that you heard said sound? It was a little after the mock trial had started. Mr. Wright and I were practically bored to tears there in the waiting room when... Uh, uh, ah! Precisely, if that sound you heard did happen while the body was being moved, that would explain it during the mock trial. Oof! Which means the body wouldn't have been there before the mock trial started! <laughs> you see, right before the mock trial started, I saw the body, and then my capture device did that moving thing, and it screwed up again. So now I gotta do a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, and... Voila! <laughs> I saw the body. He said, he said he saw the body before the mock trial. If so, then my claim that the body was moved during the mock trial doesn't hold water. Stupid contradiction. It's going to get me and our case killed. The focus was on just three suspects because the body was moved before the mock trial. That has been a major premise thus far. Your assertion, therefore, contradicts the very foundation of this case. Objection. Both sides still lack incontrovertible evidence. 
So, should we not also treat Golden Boy's testimony with some level of suspicion? Hmm, good point. Ah! Aren't you on my side? That chance. The prosecutor Blackwell is on our side. I bet he figured out the truth behind this case. Well, great. As long as he's not up to something else. Wait, who said that? I bet he figured out the truth of this case. Well, great as long as- Yeah, I said the wrong words. If the statues really were broken when the body hit them, then Hugh's statement about seeing the body before the mock trial is a big, fat lie. He's nothing but a big, fat phony. A big, fat- You're a phony. A big, fat phone. I can't believe I'm being- res I'm resorting to stupid- Uh... 12 or no like 1999 family guy jokes <laughs> okay mr o'connor let's get to the bottom of this contradiction about when you saw the body look me straight in the eyes and repeat your statement to me ah like i said before uh before the mock trial the body was you know <clears throat> I shall say this once more, Golden Boy. You had best tell the truth. And do it now. That is, if your head, if your head wish. That is, if your head wish to enjoy the. That doesn't sound right to me. If your head wish. It's. I think it should be. That is. If your head wishes to enjoy the continued companionship of your body. Yikes! Youch! <laughs> now, out with it! Did you truly witness the body? Or were you just lying about it? Which is it? I... I... You what? I... I... I never saw the body. Are you sure about that? Lie to this court, again, and I'll charge you with perjury! There was no body at on the stage. There was no body on that stage! I've been lying about that this whole time! I'm... I'm sorry. You're sorry that's the best you can say? Yes! We've exposed Hugh's big, fat, phony lie for what it is! But... Why would he lie about this to begin with? Order! The base premise that the body was moved before the mock trial has been overturned. I imagine this has been a big impact on both the defense and the prosecutor's case. Well, first I'd like to thank the prosecutor. This does bring us closer to the truth. Now, at least we know the body was moved using the wire and school banner. Indeed. That much I shall concede, Sykes don't know. The body was moved, as you stated, and in the midst of the mock trial. Hmm. So both sides are satisfied, then? Hmm. If the body was moved before the mock trial... We have our three suspects. But if the move took place in the midst of the mock trial, it is an entirely different story. Right. All three suspects were in the mock trial. That gives them solid alibis. Objection! 
Oof. How simplistic. Did you forget about the student in charge of the audio? Amidst the mock trial, she was the one soul who could leave and re-enter the lecture hall at will. What's this? Who is this person in the charge of the audio? Oh no! How could I forget? It was... Hey, what's the big deal here? Why is Junie so large in this shot? <laughs> Juniper was also in charge of the audio. When she wasn't in the trial, she was in the audio control room dealing with the music. Indeed, the one who could enter the art room amidst the mock trial to move the body was none other than the accused Juniper Woods, for she was in charge of the audio. <laughs> Why, yes, I see. That does make perfect sense. This can't be happening. Instead of exposing Hugh's crime, Junie's in even deeper. No matter how you slice it, we're roast duck. Or cooked goose, whatever you want to say. And here I thought Prosecutor Blackwell was on our side. <sighs> At least on this issue. The twisted samurai strikes yet again. T twisted? It's more like dirty rotten if you ask me. <laughs> Your baldness. It is time to put an end to this farce. Hmm, the prosecution has presented quite a convincing case. But the defense has one last chance to voice any remaining objections. Well, Miss Sykes? Apollo, what are we going to do? I got nothing left! Nothing! Nada! Niente! I've been trying to think of something, but I'm drawing a big blank too. Ah, uh, poor Junie. Unless we figure out something, she'll be... Uh, objection! Objection! Um, well, I object to... Hold it! <laughs> Stop right there! All ears to me! It's time you heard about the rare genius of Hugh O'Connor! Listen, and you will hear the secret behind my perfect crime. P -p 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 perfect crime? <laughs> 